Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's Rich. All right, I want to show you guys something. This is really, really crazy, and I'm very, very excited, not only for myself, but for all of you. All right, so I'm going to show you something really quickly first. So the job that I'm doing for heavy metal, I need oversized paper, and it's an unusual um, dimension that I'm going to be working, square size. Um, so I wanted something that was, you know, 13 by 13, maybe 15 by 15, um, and... Uh, so I was looking around in my storage um, to see if I had any oversized paper, and I didn't. Uh, but in my office, uh, behind the door, I had a huge package of, like, this large paper. And I was, I honestly thought it was maybe prints of my work that, that because uh, I've had some oversized um, prints done for um, a few uh, companies. When I did that Alphonse Mucha exhibit, they made a very large uh, reproduction of one of my pieces. Um so anyway, um, I just wanted to show you the size difference between an 11 by 17 board. You could probably, on this paper, you, you could make, I think, three 11 by 17 boards. Super close. Um, but this is where it gets really surprising. So the disappointing thing when you buy these big sheets of paper is a lot of them will have like a little crest on it. So maybe in the corner, you'll see like a little circle emblem that might say Strathmore or whatever. But... You know, a lot of times it's pretty ambiguous and you just don't know what the paper is. So it looked like there was about 10 to 15 sheets of this stuff in there. And uh, I was like, man, I don't even know what it's going to be. So the first thing I do whenever I have paper that I don't know what it is, is I test it. As I went to pull the first sheet of paper out, this is what was inside of the package. All right. So this is what this is. This is Staples poster board, 10 sheets. It's 22 by 28 white paper. Okay, on one side, it's really slick, like you would expect like poster board to be, um, you know, like just kind of that really gross sort of feeling. The back feels like smooth Bristol board. It's got a little bit of a tooth to it. If you've ever bought uncut um, Strathmore paper, it kind of feels like that. It's thick though. This is about a two ply board. Um, so this is where it gets really crazy. I'm thinking, all right, it's going to be terrible. I'm going to throw a nib through it, and it's just going to melt like like butter, like like if you were inking on a paper towel. So this is where it gets completely insane. This stuff is good. It's actually really good. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so check this out. These are Hunt 102 lines, the ones, the little cross-hatching thing right there. There is no bleed at all. Do you see that? None. And that's a sharp 102. Usually that will, like, that just decimates um, average paper. That You can tell right away. You throw down some croquil lines and it's done. So the next thing is that it, crappy paper will suck up black ink and really make it look crappy. Okay, do you see those jet black areas? It goes down jet black. It's crazy. So I don't want to, um, hold on. Well, I mean, like, here. It, it dries completely as black as that. Okay, that's super duper impressive. Um, even good paper, I've had I've had DC image board, you name it, that soaks up. Uh, at, like literally, it's like the, the ink just soaks into the paper and you get this kind of more wash. Look. These are wash. The ones that, that look more washy are actually wash. So that's the third thing that you want to test is can it take wash? What happens with wash and what it will do to paper that's cheap is you'll get this effect. Okay, so let me show you something really quick. I was using really, really dirty water, so there's a ton of um, particles in it, meaning um, just almost like silt that you would have like in a pond. Um, so when I threw this first one down, you you get that. And, and all that is is that's just... Um, crap in the in the water you know black ink that's that's dried and flaked and it's diluted so it kind of goes down like like a watered down paste but with clean water look at this there's none so this paper is great so the final test that i did was my white ink so what what happens with with some paper is and i put a lot of white that's a lot of white paint um is um the paper will be off white. So what ends up happening is you put down white ink and let me show you what it really looks like with just a little bit. Oh, I'm going to pause this one. Okay. I'm back. I just don't want you to be confused because you're going to go, well, I can see that as plain as day that you have white paint there. I took a lot and, and put it down. That's a really, really thick application of paint. Here's what it looks like when I really put white down. You can't even see it. <laughs> okay. So if I was doing a correction, 
I would I would put more like that amount. <laughs> so you can see that's like that's a big chunk of it. So it it blends in perfectly. So look, is this the greatest paper in the world? No, probably not. Um, I don't know how it ages. Like it may get very yellow over time. I, you know, I don't know. I've had this for at least five or six years, and it looks is new as it did when I assume I got it for some sort of school project that my kid was doing. But um, I'm not even kidding. Like, okay, so a package of this stuff is $7 and change. And, and you could get, in theory, 30 pages of comic board. So that's that's about, usually a comic board is about a dollar a page. So you, you're saving $23 and you can get it at Staples. And it's good, but again, you can't do anything with this side. And, and where it was really wet here, the one thing that I'll say is, is you can look back here. It did, it did do a little crease, but I put a ton of water on the paper. Um, usually when you apply wash, this, this isn't watercolor paper, so don't use it as watercolor paper. But you could water your ink down and, and lay it in like that. Just don't soak the paper. Uh, any paper would do that with as much water. And I let that dry for five or six minutes. I mean, I put like, again, about as much white paint as these chunks. Um, same deal here. I mean, you can actually see there's there's a little hole where I had so much water that it actually kind of created like a circle, the real dark area. But I'm telling you, on a scale from one to 10, I would give this paper right now like an eight, eight and a half. I was really, really surprised. And it takes brush feathering great. Those are all brush lines. There's just no splintering at all. So here, I'm gonna show you this again. But this is a really good hack for people on a budget. Um, I'm just gonna set the phone down for one second. For, for people on a budget, for people that are having trouble finding good paper, look, <laughs> Staples poster board, 11 sheets, white, item number 247403. It's important because you don't want to get foam core or something else. And uh, I'm just, I'm blown away. I, I can't believe the quality of it. It's really, really good. And again, it's it's not completely smooth. It, it doesn't feel like it has a finish on it, um, which it probably doesn't because it, it it's, you know, like hobby paper. Um, but uh, it, it's smooth with just the tiniest bit of tooth on it. Not bad at all, though. But uh, I like it. I'm going to use it for this heavy metal job. And uh, man, there you go. Really, really cool. All right, smash the like. I hope you all have a great day. And thank you for the live stream. It was actually very, very fun. And uh, this is why you want to try stuff. Because uh, it did well. It did real well. All right, thanks. Bye.